Good afternoon. Today I want to talk about integration. Integration is just the opposite of differentiation, in another word known as antiderivative. Uh, from our knowledge of differentiation, we have learned that if you have a function y equals x to the power of n, dy, which is change in y with respect to x, is equal to nx to the power of n minus 1. This is what we have learned in our previous lesson. Integration is telling us that if we integrate this function, we are going to get back our original function. Everything you do in differentiation, you have to do the opposite of that in integration. All right, let us now integrate this function to see whether we are going to obtain our original function. What we are going to do now is to multiply both sides by dx, thereby obtaining dy equals nx to the power of n minus 1 dx. So now we are going to integrate both sides by integrating the left hand side and this is the sign of integration. We also have to integrate the other side with respect to x. By integrating the left hand side we are going to obtain y and to the right hand side look off. Whatever we do here we are going to do the opposite. So this is equal to n x to the power of n minus 1. This is the function. Now we are going to integrate. Remember, in differentiation, we subtract 1, but here we are going to add 1. You see the opposite? In differentiation, we multiply the function by the index, but this time around we are going to divide by the index and now the index is n minus 1 plus 1. In integration you have to add before dividing but in differentiation you have to multiply before subtraction. So now let us simplify. Minus 1 plus 1 is 0 so we have only n here. So this is the same thing as nx to the power of n. Divide by this is the same thing as n2 because minus 1 plus 1 is 0, leaving only n. And n cancel n, y now equals to x power n. But in integration, you see this is the function we have initially, but in integration we have to add a constant of integration which is most often we use c. And c is a subset of real numbers. In my next example, I will show you why we have this constant of integration. So in general, if you are in to integrate x to the power of n, this will be x to the power of n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 plus the constant of integration. So this is the formula we are going to use for uh, integrating an algebraic function, but not. n is not equal to negative 1 because if it is negative 1 plus 1 is 0 and x to the power of 0 is 1 then c I told you is a subset of real number so this is the general uh, form of integration so now let us look on to another example suppose y equals to x to the power of 3 plus 2 first of all let us differentiate this function and see the result by differentiating this function with respect to x, we are going to obtain, you know, this exponent is going to come down, 3, then you subtract 1 from that, 2. The derivative of a constant term is 0, so this is what we have by differentiating this. So now let us integrate this function to see whether we are going to obtain the initial function. First of all, multiply both sides by dx so that we have dy on the left hand side. And to the right hand side we have 3x squared dx. Let's apply integration to both side, integrating this side and to the other side too. On the left hand side we have y 
and to the right hand side we have uh, 3x this time around we are going to apply this principle our index which is n is 2 plus 1 is 3 then divide by n plus 1 which is 2 plus 1 again which is 3 plus our constant of integration from here this cancel this therefore we say y equals x to the power of 3 plus c but our initial function is x to the power of 3 plus 2 this shows that c is equal to 2 even here we call it constant and this 2 is also constant so no matter what if you have a function plus a constant whether this 2 is 1 million if you differentiate 1 million you're going to obtain 0 therefore by integrating that function the end product is going to be the function plus constant c for example suppose y equals to if you differentiate the first function plus 1 with respect to x you are going to get 2x likewise the second function if you differentiate that x squared minus 2 with respect to x you're still going to get 2x you see but their constants are different here we have positive 1 and here we have negative 2 but their derivatives are the same likewise each of this derivative if you integrate it you're going to obtain x squared plus c instead of the numbers so this c is representing these numbers which are constants and they are subset of real numbers so this is all about introduction to integration subsequently in our next class we are going to see how to apply chain rule uh, in integration just like in differentiation you differentiate the outer function then you multiply by the derivative of inner function but in integration you are going to divide by the derivative of the inner function